couple of months ago, we heard from the from the news. Uh, this on the, on the on the first slide, I want uh, I want to show you this. This is the that's not a toy. That is a big a big big ship that was listed and then uh, turned over. And uh, that that gives the the title of this sermon, abandoned ship. The abandoned ship command inst instruction was never given. Everybody were comfortable and go their own ways, thinking that in few hours they can enjoy time in the island. So this. Uh, I don't know, maybe just uh, early this year or last year in Korea, in South Korea, uh, a lot of children, a lot of uh, school children, they went from uh, Incheon, Incheon, Korea, and they traveled, they cruised to uh, Jeju Island, uh, like a tour, uh, like a, a place where they can enjoy themselves. And because of the storm, that ship was, uh, I think it, it lost power or something like that. Uh, there's a problem with the ship. And then um, it stopped for a couple of hours. And then slowly it listed. And um, when, when it listed, when the, when the ship listed, the captain keeps saying and the crew keeps saying, Stay put, stay put, just put your, your uh, life fast. Just stay in your rooms. There are hundreds of rooms. Like, um, how, how many have been in a cruise? How many? I know s several of us have been in a cruise. So, so there are rooms, a lot of rooms in this also. This is a big ship and a lot of rooms. And they were given instruction through the speaker, through the, through the loudspeaker. Stay put, stay put, just put your, your uh, vest. But then it listed, it listed. And um, finally, it just turned over until the door, the door of, uh, to go out of the room is on your ceiling. So that's, that's how it's, it, uh, it tilted like this. So when, when the door is on your roof, how can, you, how can you exit? You cannot exit, right? So all hundreds of children was, were drowned. Uh, they died because the abandoned ship command was never given. Everybody were comfortable, go their own ways, thinking that in few hours they can enjoy time in the island. We also read in Acts, about the Paul's journey um, in the Mediterranean. That time, uh, Paul gave a warning. Man, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous and bring great loss to ship and cargo and to our own lives also. But the centurion, in that, that time, uh, Paul was uh, uh, in prison and he was carried by that ship and um, travel cruise uh, to Rome. But the centurion, instead of listening to what Paul said, followed the advice of the pilot, the captain, and of the owner of the ship. Since the harbor was unsuitable to winter in, the majority, the majority, take this, uh, take this uh, uh, word, the majority decided that we should sail on, hoping to reach Phoenix and winter there. This was a harbor in Crete, facing both southwest and northwest. Uh, about the, the, the word majority, the majority decided. So this is talking about Democracy. We live in also in a democracy. So the majority takes control. 
However, sometimes, oftentimes, the majority can also trap, trap in a democracy hole. We we remember, and we we also read about a uh, lot about the word uh, the, about uh, Lot and his family. They sat in a city's gate where they live, the gates of Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, you know, in that in that uh, life that they live they live in. They also, maybe it's because of overwhelm or maybe because of the, the situation, uh, they cannot practice their faith. They cannot, they cannot say what, what they believe. Uh, can you show me? There, there is a one, uh, one slide. I want to show. Um, yeah, okay, yeah, this one. That time, Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. There was a steady progression of compromises in Lot's life. Notice these steps. He went from he went from looking toward Sodom. That is in Genesis thirteen ten. This, see the progressive to pitching his tent toward Sodom to living in Sodom and then losing everything. Now Lot sat in the gate of Sodom indicating that he was a civic leader. He was a civic leader. So we, we, are, we are in this situation also. Uh, we are grateful that we live in Texas. Uh, I, I just read a couple of days ago. Um, I don't know if you, you have that slide about our governor. Our governor, uh, Governor Greg Abbott, signed a bill on Thursday, just a couple of days ago. Do you have that? who signed a bill Thursday that allows clergy members to refuse to conduct marriages that violate their beliefs. Hold on. Yes, I press something. and uh, Pastors now have the freedom to exercise their First Amendment rights. The signing ceremony for the so-called Pastor Protection Act, which goes into effect September 1st, was held outside of the governor's mansion. Abbott, our governor, do you, do you know the, the name of our governor now? Greg Abbott, you know that, right? Who don't know? <laughs> Greg Abbott signed that. Abbott was surrounded by about two dozen clergy members at the news conference discussing the law. So that, uh, this law will give a guarantee so our pastors doesn't have to marry uh, if, if uh, Adam and Steve decided to want to marry uh, so our pastor have to bless them. So our pastor uh, will be protected by the law not to marry Adam and Steve. So, so do you know that this, this is uh, uh, in the law right now? About uh, three days ago. It was, it was signed into law. Probably the majority, the majority of the people here, we cannot say that. We cannot say this is our belief. This is according to the Bible. You have to follow. If uh, Pastor Simon doesn't want to bless Adam and Steve, then he can be put in jail if we don't have this law. But now this law put that, that protect us. So we will be thankful, Pastor Sami. You don't have to do that, right? So we are, we are grateful that we live in Texas that will protect pastors, forcing them to marry LGBT. You know that 
that uh, phrase LGBT. If you don't know, then it's okay. Freedom of religion is the most sacred of our rights and our freedom to worship is secured by the Constitution, Abbott said. Religious re leaders in the state of Texas must be absolutely secure in the knowledge that religious freedom is beyond the reach of government or coercion by the court. That time, when the land, the land becomes so corrupt, Sodom and Gomorrah, God didn't have a choice other than executing his wrath like Sodom and Gomorrah. We live. We live uh, in, in the Bible. There is uh, also a covenant, God with his people. The, we, we just call it a Palestinian covenant. There is a God will do this part. God will do his part when we do our part. So if you do this, then God will do this. But if you don't do that, then God has to do his judgment. So now the question is Lot and his family, are they still called light of the world or salt of the world? What is written in Matthew 5, 13, 14? That time, because of the majority said so, Paul has to go. That cruise, when, when we read that verse about that storm, when a gentle south wind began to blow, they thought they had obtained what they wanted. Is that what we always, sometimes we, because we, we see the situation? When a gentle south wind began to blow, they thought they had obtained what they wanted. So they weigh anchor and sail along the shore of creek. Naturally, we walk by sight and not by faith and not guided by revelation. The physical situation and the weather showing a gentle south wind began to blow and we thought we had obtained what we wanted. Everything seems to be in harmony. Everything will be as in prosperity and peace and calm. This brings us to a state of complacency. Complacency. This is what we, we read. After everything is nice and calm, economy-wise, you have a lot of money, a lot of money in the bank. Complacency. They thought everything is going to be all right. Does this not mimic what is the situation right now? When Bible scholars have vigil, making sure they keep their relationship with God right, some people do their own ways and they don't care, not keep their gown spotless without wrinkle to welcome the bridegroom. Complacency comes progressively, gradual. It's like, you know, complacency comes progressive and gradual. Boys, it's like pornography, which is addicted, which is progressive and deadly. We, we, we also read in Sodom that Lot also see the Sodom and pitched his tent and one by one step at a time going inside. Complacency comes progressively gradual. Thank God that we repent and turn from our wicked days because it's his promise because it's his promise when we repent and turn from our wicked ways second chronicles seven fourteen said if my people learn that voice learn that verse say it with your heart this is the word of god himself if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. There was a steady progression of compromises.